most valid student my name is confident welcome to our revision session uh, this is uh, a revision session where I focus on Kramer's rule so it is for the students who are doing their mathematics and four and I chose off uh, looking at Kramer's rule because it is one of the questions that usually carry good marks so let us look at a typical exam paper example that I brought in here for you uh, this paper was written in November 2020 and also just a few things so that we know what to do. The instructions here says, I'm um, interested in number five, to say we are going to round off all our answers to three decimal places. You can see that. So that is important unless indicated otherwise. And let us look at the example given here. So there were other questions, of course, uh, in this paper, but uh, you see there is question three out of 20 marks. There is question four, and it is question four that I'm interested in. And the question four part is uh, 4.1. We'll also look at 4.2. And 4.1 is the one that is saying when applying Kirchhoff's law in a circuit that is for your science, engineering science, the following equations are, are obtained and you have these equations. Now it says determine the value of I3 by only using Kramer's rule. So that is the part why I'm saying let us use Kramer's rule and look at the marker location. It is 8 marks. So I know the question says, let us find I3, but I want us to go on to find I2, and I want us to go on to find I1 using Kramer's rule. Now, let me rewrite this. Uh, uh, actually, let me copy this so that we can have them um, in a new page like that I think this is visible so what I have I need now what I need to do is to have I1 I2 I3 on one side of the equation so that the number is on the other side so I'm going to rearrange these equations and this is what I'm going to have and the first one I'll have 6i1 it's very important to be sensitive here now you see I2 is on the other side I'm going to take it to the other side to become minus 7 I 2 and then I 3 here is just I 3 which means there is a 1 before I 3 which is plus 1 I 3 this is for current this is equal to 0 comma 5 I hope you're seeing that so that is the first part I'm going to arrange the second equation again, I1, meaning there is a 1 there, which is 1, I1. And then again, it's minus 3, I2, which is already arranged. But I3, which has got 8, it will jump there to become minus 8, I3. And then this is equal to negative 9. And then the last one again to rearrange is um, take the 2 there, I1, to join there. It will be negative 2 I1. And then already we have got minus, there is a 1 there, which is minus 1 I2. And then it's plus 3 I3 is equal to 4. So these are the equations. Now they said I must use Kramer's rule. There are other ways of solving this without using Kramer's rule, but I need to use Kramer's rule to solve that. So now, how do I go about using Kramer's rule? The first thing to do is to find the determinant of this uh, in matrix form. So this is the matrix that you're going to use. So what I have, if I write it in a uh, matrix form, now what you have are the coefficients so by coefficients are the numbers uh, look at the coefficients of i1 which are the numbers before i1 so i have got these numbers 
that's the number that I'm going to write, which is 6, 1, and minus 2 for I1. So what I'm going to have is, I'm going to have 6, 1, minus 2. That's the first uh, part that I have. I can just make this more neat. Okay. And then again, I do the same thing for I2. These are the coefficient of I2, which is minus 7, minus 3, and minus 1. Similarly, the coefficient of I3 with the signs, remember? So it's 1, minus 8, and 3. So the positive ones are by default, so we can leave them like that. So this is what I am having here as the coefficient, just to cross-check again. 6, 1, minus 2, minus 7, minus 3, minus 1, 1, minus 8, 3. You need to be very sensitive with errors in this case. So now let us find the determinant of um, this matrix. Now when they're saying you need to use Kramer's rule, what they're saying is... You, are need, you, you need to use the formula for Kramer's rule, which says if you want to find I1, it is equal to D of I1 over D, which I'm going to explain that. And then if you want to find I2, it is equal to D, which is the determinant of I2 over the determinant or the uh, when you the value of the matrix and then when you want to find I3 it is D of I3 over D now remember actually that the uh, they've already given us the question actually wanted us to find um, I3 but I said let us find the whole matrix just to know how you go about that now when you have done that we are going to also check how you prove your answer to ensure that you are correct. So now, let us first find, in this case, I want to find my D. How do you find the determinant of the matrix or the value of this particular matrix? So what I have is, I've got two methods that I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to show you the one that I think is much quicker. And then you can choose to use it. And then I'm going to do the normal method that is always used so if I find uh, to find the determinant there of D it is equal to so what I have remember for D there the modulus or the determinant is 6 1 negative 2 let me actually use uh, because you need to find it if I can do it more straight like that so what we have Um, it is my 6, my 1, and minus 2. I have got minus 7, minus 3, and minus 1. And I have got 1, negative 8, and 3. Now, what I'm going to write, I'm going to write the two columns like that. So what I have is, again, these columns are, if I can just change, it's 6, it's 1, it's minus 2, and it's minus 7, it's minus 3, and minus 1. So I'm just writing those two columns like that. So what I do then is to have this particular line like that. I think I can use, yes, that pen is fine. Okay, let me use a different one. Let me use the yellow one. So I'm going to make it light. I'm going to have that. And I'm going to have that. And I'm going to have that. So the important things are the numbers. So now if I can now use my calculator to multiply, I'm multiplying these numbers. So I've got 6 times negative 3 times 3. Across, as you can see the lines, I'm multiplying the 6 the negative 3 and the 3, it gives me minus 54. So I write there minus 54. Remember, I'm multiplying that, that, and that. That's what I'm doing in this case. So it will be, the next one will be minus 7 times minus 8 times 
negative 2. Be careful when you're multiplying. It's minus 112. So I've got minus 112. And these I need to add them. But you're going to see that later. Then I multiply 1 times 1, which is 1. 1 times minus 1, which is negative 1. Then I need to add these numbers. So there's a plus and there's a plus. So that's the first part. And then the second one is also similar, but in another line, I need to have the lines like that and the other lines like that. You can use a ruler and the other lines like that. So I need also to multiply this. So it is negative 2 times negative 3, which is positive 6. 6 times 1, it's 6. And then, as I said, you are adding this. And... um. This was, I think, because I need to be sensitive, it's 8. This part is 8 there, so that I don't miss the numbers. So I have got, um, I can use the calculator there. It's um, 6 times negative 8 times negative 1, which is equal to, uh, it's positive 48 here. Again, I add, now it's negative 7 times 1 times 3, which is negative 21. So you can see these two uh, numbers. So what I do, I'm going to then subtract the second from the first. So I'm going to take this part, this one, which is minus 54, and then minus 112, minus 1 and then subtract this particular part which is bracket 6 plus 48 minus 21 you can add them first add that one add that one you can find the answer you can find the answer and then subtract them like that but i'm just going to do it once so what i have then is minus 54 minus 112 minus 1 minus bracket 6 plus 48 minus 21 when you do that is the answer i'm getting is minus 200 so i am getting there my d is equal to negative 200 so that is the first part that i'm having here now, when I found the value of this matrix, what I need to do, I'm continuing. Um, just because of space, I don't want to work this too far. So you can see that I've got my D as negative 200. So I'm going to do here, I'm going to take my D and say this is equal to minus 200 there. And erase all the other parts because I've got my D now. So that is the first part. Now the second part I need to do now is to find uh, my my other determinants of I1, I2, and I3. So how do I go about that? Remember, our, I've already written uh, the matrix. So now I need to find the first one is the D of I1. So I'm going to write it in the matrix form. Remember, this is that, the modulus or the, the value. So I'm going to have equal to, just do that. So I've got that, which is equal to. So I'm going to write it also similar to what we did. And then what I have now, I want you to see something because I'm finding I1 and we said these are the coefficients of I1. If you still remember, these were belonging to I1. So I'm not going to write anything there, but I'm going to start from the second column, which I, I had minus 7, minus 3, minus 1. And the other one for that um, I3 is, min is 1 minus 8 and 3. So now the question is, what do I have for the first part, which is 6, 1 and minus 2? Because I'm dealing with I1, I don't write 6, 1 
and minus 2 instead I'm going to write the values uh, these values are the ones that I'm going to write these values are the one that will substitute these values when I'm finding the determinant of I1 so you can see where there was I1 which was this I substitute with that so that is what I'm just going to be doing in that particular case so if we were to do that I have 0 comma 5 and then I have minus 9 and then I have 4 as the last number there so this is what I'm having and again similar to the method that I did previously you write the first two which is this as 0 comma 5 minus 9 and 4 minus 7 minus 3 and minus 1 so that's what I'm gonna have and I'm going to start by as I said previously uh, also you have your faint lines just to evaluate that and my faint lines to find that and that to find that so I'm going to be adding this so if I take the calculator it is 0 comma 5 times negative 3 times 3 so when I do that I'm getting a uh, minus 9 over which is negative 4 comma 5 let me do it again 0 comma 5 times negative 3 times negative 1 for that I'm getting Okay, let me do it again. Let me do that again. It's 0, 0,5 times negative 3 times a 3, not a 1, which is negative 4,5. Remember, I'm adding these values. Do the same thing, which is negative 7 times negative 8 times 4. I'm getting 224, which is positive. And then I'm adding again, which is 1 times minus 9, which is minus 9, minus 9 times negative 1, which is a positive 9. So these, I'm going to add them together. You can actually add them to say when you add that, to gain one answer, it is minus 4,5 plus 2 to 4 plus 9. And then it gives me, in this case, 2 to 8,5. So you can add them if you want, like that. Then we do the second part. And the second part is similar. You're doing that one. And just those lines. So you multiply again. 4 times minus 3 times 1. 4 times minus 3 is negative 12 times 1. It remains as negative 12. And the one for fractions can be a bit trickier. So it's 0, 0,5 times negative 8 times negative 1. You can rely on a calculator strictly here. It will be even more better. I've got a 4, which is positive. And then plus, then the last one I have is 3 times negative 9 times negative 7. And then I've got... 189 again I can add this together so that it can give me a single number which is negative 12 plus 4 plus 189 it gives me 181 now remember how do you find the answer for that one so the di1 in this case is equal to 228 comma 5 minus 181 and then the answer that i'm going to get there will be it's 228 comma 5 minus 181 which is equal to in this case 47 comma 5 so this is my di1 which is 47 comma 5 
So I come here to say this was 47,5. Now remember this question wanted us to find I3. So I could have gone straight to I3 and found the answer without any problem. And this would have been done. But I'm interested in showing you how to solve questions that say find I1, I2 and I3. And I just want us to do everything like that. So we have done that. Now remember when you make an error in such a long method, you have to go back and try to find out where you made the error. So now we are done with I1. Let us look at the determinant of I2. So if, if we were to find the D of I2, and in this particular case, we are going to say equal to, and I'll be having in this case, it's similar to the, uh, we're just repeating now, everything is repetition. So I have in here six, one, minus two. Now I'm gonna leave that for I two, then I've got one, negative eight and three. Why am I omitting I two? Remember I two is the one which is, that is my I two and it is linked to the number which is that and I'm also finding my I2 so whenever you're finding the I2 you do not include I2 now where there is I2 you are going to write these values where you have got I2 here so that's what you do you substitute with those values so I'm, it's, it's similar to what I did at first so where there is I2 now I have 0, 0,5 Instead of minus 7, now I write uh, 0, 0,5. And then instead of minus 3, I write minus 9. It, not to squeeze in this. Uh, I need to give it space. So I have minus 9. Instead of uh, minus 1, I have 4. So I have got 1 there got minus 8 and I've got 3 because there was no space there so when you have done that you do the same thing what I did you take the first two you write them again which will become your 6 in this case my 1 and minus 2 and 0 comma 5 minus 9 and 4 so when I've done that I solve it similar to what I did previously. Just make your faint lines to find that product, find that product, and find that product. So the calculator always comes handy for me here, which is 6 times negative 9 times 3. I'm getting minus uh, 162. So it's minus 162 plus now the other one is 0, 0,5 times negative 8 times negative 2. Again, I'm getting a positive 8 there. And then the other one is 1 times 1 times 4, which is a positive 4. Then when you add that, you can find the answer there. But it's not a must to add, as I showed you. You can actually do that once then you find the other one which is that and I've got that and I have that so it is negative 2 I mean 1 times minus 9 is negative 9 negative 9 times negative 2 is positive 18 and then plus uh, if I take the calculator in this other one which is 6 times negative 8 times 4 which is negative 192 and then the other one is 0, 0,5 times 1 times 3 comma 5 times 1 times 3 and it gives me 1 comma 5 so it's a positive 1 comma 5 so with the calculator I'm finding my D of I2 is equal to 
so i'm subtracting remember and this one which is minus 162 plus 8 plus 4 minus bracket 18 minus 192 plus 1 comma 5 that's what actually i'm doing which is equal to my i2 therefore will be in this case uh, 162 it's negative 162 in this case plus 8 plus 4 minus put a bracket it's 18 minus 192 and plus 1 comma 5 the main thing here is to always avoid errors 22 comma 5 so i've got 22 comma 5 here which is what i'm going to use in this one as di2 is 22 comma 5 then this is over minus 200 i hope you're able to see now how this thing is shaping up so with that you do your last one and your last one is the determinant of i3 so how do you work on it is the same method to say my determinant of i3 in this case which will be equal to so you have again and that so that you have got now your six your one your minus two minus seven minus three minus one now i3 is linked to that part the coefficients of i3 remember are these now i cannot write them as they are i need to substitute them with that so that's what i'm going to be doing where there is one i put 0 comma 5 where there is minus 8 i put minus 9 where there is 3 i put the 4 so that is what i'm going to be doing there so the first one is 0 comma 5 and the other one is minus 9 and lastly it is 4 so that's what i'm having now and i have to write this again as 6 1 minus 2 minus 7 minus 3 and minus 1 and again similar method just to find the you add the product of these so that I have in this case the first one is 6 times negative 3 times 4 which is equal to negative 72 that's the first one and you are adding it to um, negative 7 times negative 9 uh, times negative 2 so what you're having is negative 126 and the last one is 0 comma 5 sorry about that Let me grab my calculator again it's 0 comma 5 times 1 times negative 1 it is negative 0 comma 5 and then you need to add that if you want to so that you have minus 72 minus 126 minus 0 comma 5 it will give you minus 198 comma 5 all right that is what the question wanted they wanted d3 i mean i3 then we do the same thing so should have you have if you wanted you could have gone straight to this one after finding d and you didn't need to do the rest but i'm just doing it so that you can see how we find now when i do that it will be in this one 0 comma 5 0 comma 5 times negative 3 times negative 2 what I get is 3 here plus you do the same thing there I have in this case a 6 
times um it's a six not a nine it is a six times a negative nine i need to be sure that was a negative nine times a negative one which is 54 just to be sure that was a nine yes that's correct and then the last one is seven times one which is minus seven i mean minus seven times one minus seven minus seven times four which is negative 28 so you are adding that so if i add these on their own they are giving me three plus 54 minus 28 it is 29 so this is 29 now remember if i'm finding determinant of i3 is equal to minus 198 comma 5 minus 29 and then the answer that i'm going to get is in this case it's negative 198 comma 5 minus 29 and i'm getting negative 227 comma 5 so it is what i'm going to write here as d is equal to negative 227 comma 5 over minus 200 so that is how this whole thing was supposed to be answered so now it's up to you now to solve it if you want to find your i1 you come here and top to say my i1 is equal to then you use the calculator here to say 47 comma 5 um it's actually 47 comma 5 fraction just to be saying so it's 47 comma 5 over negative 200 and then you get here uh in three decimal places remember they say three decimal places so it's minus 0 comma 238 so it's negative 0 comma 2 Three, eight. that is your i1 in this case and then you go for your i2 your i2 now in this case i2 is equal to you do the same thing 22 comma 5 over negative 200 to two decimal places using negative 0 comma 1125 which is negative 0 comma 113 so negative 0 comma 113 so you can put the units in amps but it's not necessary you are not the units are not sensitive and then the last one is negative 227 comma 5 over negative 200 and then you get your answer is 1 comma 1375 which is 1 comma 138 so it's 1 comma 138 and this is the i3 that they needed in that case so you can see how this could have been solved but you can test your answer now remember when you're testing your answer you need to be sensitive i'm just going to try the one because i can see all my answers here uh, the, the last equation where there is i1 i2 i3 so you can take a calculator and say remember it's a uh, minus 2 if you can just do this it is here negative 2 and i've got i1 but now i want the original i1 not the rounded off and i1 is bracket it's 47,5 and then over negative 200 that's what you do you need to test your answer like that minus i2 is minus just one bracket and i2 is uh 22,5 over negative 200 see that and then plus 3 and i3 is negative two to seven comma five and this is over negative 200 now when you've done that 
the answer that I must get here, it must be 4 equal to, you can see that it gives me a 4. If these answers were not correct, it is not possible for you to get an accurate 4 like that. You can test the top one, you can test all of them, and you will see that then it's a, it's a in a way, uh, you are concluding that the answers are correct. So this was method number one. Now, I just want to show you, in this case, how we go for method number two. Now, for us to do um, method number two, let me just try to undo this. Because the formula doesn't change for finding um, Kramer's rule. This is, this is the formula for Kramer's rule. So whenever they're talking about Kramer's rule, uh, Kramer, Kramer's rule, they are referring to the formula that is below, as you can see it here. So I'm going to see if ever these answers are maintained. So I'm going to use method two just to show you. So how do I go with the second method? It's the most common one that you find in, um, in the test books. That's the most common method. And how does it go about? The first thing is to, fi is to find the value of D of this matrix. So how do I find the value of this matrix, which is in this case, my D? So how do I find uh, this matrix? It is equal to, so what I do is I'll take that six. And when I take that six, I'm crossing that and I'm crossing that. And what I'm seeing is that. So let me do it step by step. So as I said at first, I'm crossing this particular six. That's what I'm going to write as six. And then with that, I'm going to have this particular matrix that will remain here, which will be, as I said, if I cross that and that, I'm seeing this particular number that's what i'm going to write in that particular case so i'm going to write minus three minus eight minus one and three that's the first part the next one is now this matrix it starts with positive negative positive so it's negative positive negative positive negative positive but i'm interested in this sign so I started with a positive 6, now I'm following with, with a negative there, which is minus. Now minus, then I'm in this number, which is also bracket minus 7. I repeat again the same step. In this case, I have that. I hope my space will allow me. So I have, now if I cross the minus 7 remember my key is that minus 7 i'm left with that that and that and that you can see 1 minus 2 minus 8 and 3 that's what i'm going to write there so as i said it is 1 minus 2 minus 8 and 3 and lastly, I've got one that I need to write as the last one for this particular block is plus one and the metric, if I'm to write it like that, I'm going to have now because I've got one like that, what I'm left with is that, which is one minus two minus three minus one. So I'm going to write it there as one minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 then i'm going to use the normal way of solving the matrix so this is equal to 6 remember it's minus 3 times 3 you're multiplying this way you are separating that way remember that so it's 3 times 3 which is minus 9 minus minus 8 times minus 1 which is plus 8 that's what I'm having in that case. And then moving on, minus, minus 7 is plus 7. Again, I do the same thing. 
3 times 1, I multiply like that and subtract that way. So 3 times 1 is 3 minus, minus 2 times minus 8, 8 times 2 is 16, so minus 2 times minus 8 is positive 16 there. And then plus 1, now 1 times minus 1 is negative 1, minus 2 times minus 3 it's a positive 6 then I separate like that then I use the calculator straight away to just solve this it is 6 into minus 9 minus 8 plus 7 into 3 minus 16 plus 1 1 minus 6 seeing that then it will give me minus 200 as as the answer so now we have our d in this case as our d is equal to minus 200 which is remember similar to what we got as uh, in the previous one we got our d there as 200 if you still remember now that we have found d the next part that we need to do is to find now our i1, i2, and i3. So now I'm going to show you the method of finding i3, which was the reason of the question. They wanted us to find i3, but the method also is repetitive. You repeat the same step until for i1 and i2. So now let us say you wanted to find i3 in this case. And how do you find your i3 with the um, information that is given so let us look at this part for us to find uh, d of uh, the determinant of i3 is equal to remember it's that so what you have since we are interested just want to show you again we are interested from that we are interested in um, finding our i3 and we have found in this case our value of the matrix which was d was equal to i think if you saw it was minus 200 in that case so what you do you rewrite that matrix like we did previously to say this is what you have here say you will have in this case 6, 1, minus 2, minus 7, minus 3, minus 1. Now, since I3 in this case is represented by that block, that column, so we are going to use those numbers now for uh, that is 0, 0,5, negative 9, and 4 to use instead of uh, I3. So that is what I'm going to have, which is 0, 0,5. And the for negative 8, I have negative 9. And for 4, I mean for 3, I have got 4 that I'm going to use. So this is, this is what I'm going to use. And in this case, if I'm going to find now the D of I3, it is going to be equal to I do the same thing you take the first one which is the 6 and that's what you're going to write so I'm going to write the 6 here and I'm going to have that to say if I if I use if I close that and close that I'm having these numbers minus 3 minus 9 minus 1 and 4 those are the numbers I'm going to be using so that it is minus 3, minus 9, minus 1, and 4. Now remember, it's plus. You start with in here, as I said. You have the plus, then the minus, and then the plus. So what you have also here, you will have, you have the plus. Now it's followed by minus. Now it's minus, in this case, it is minus that number, which is bracket negative 7, 
and then you do the same thing to find the value of the matrix so you close that 7 and when you cross that you see these are the numbers that are remaining 1 minus 2 minus 9 and 4 those are the numbers we're going to write which is 1 negative 2 negative 9 and 4 and then after that you are is followed by a plus remember it's mine is plus minus plus and then plus uh, 0 comma 5 which is that particular number and then when you do that you are going to have if you cross and you cross that you can see it is that 1 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 that we're going to be having so I write it 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 1 then this will help us to find in this case our di3 so it will be equal to 6 then I multiply minus 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus I mean it's minus you always separate so is this minus that when you're multiplying them remember so you multiply that minus that that is what is happening so now minus 1 times minus 9 is positive 9 so it will remain as minus 9 minus minus 7 is plus 7 1 1 times 4 remember and minus 2 times minus 9 just remember the step in this case it is 4 minus 2 times minus, minus 9 is a positive 18 so it will be negative 18 because you are subtracting and then plus 0 comma 5 and then it is 1 times minus 1 it's minus 1 minus minus 2 times minus 3 which is positive 6 so when you simplify that with the calculator it will give you your answer as 6 bracket negative 12 negative 9 plus 7 4 minus 18 plus 0 comma 5 and it's negative 1 negative 6 when you do that it is equal to press HD is negative 2 to 7 comma 5 so negative 2 to 7 comma 5 now if we look at this um, D so remember this is our D I 3 but if you look at this D I 3 here and you go back to the answer that we have remember it's negative 2 to 7 comma 5 and look at the top answer that we have we also had negative 2 to 7 comma 5 meaning it is a same method that you use to get that now you can do for di2 for di1 you can follow the similar steps here these steps are repetitive what we did here you repeat it for i1 and for i2 it will still give you the same values as we did for i3 which is 22,5 and 47,5 now because of time unfortunately i have to end the lesson but these are the two methods that you have to use whenever you're solving simultaneous equations. Now we've come to the end of our lesson. Now watch out for lesson part two as well as lesson part three, whereby I want to give you a, a in a way the, the, the similar methods that will ensure that whenever it comes to simultaneous equations, you are not here going to have a problem. Actually, uh just a moment before we finalize our lesson there is also this particular question here so we're done with the Kramer's rule there is also this question 4.2 which I'm going to work on it from here uh, if I can just use that to say is write down the determinant write down and determine the cofactor of minus 1 so they gave me this is 2 marks and then they gave me this matrix to say they need me to find the cofactor of minus 1. So you see, I have minus 1 there. So 
it is equal to if I'm going to find the cofactor there of minus 1 it is going to be in this case um, equal to let me just say equal to there and for me to be able to find the cofactor of minus 1 now remember where is uh, minus 1 minus 1 is in uh, number column number in this case minus 1 is in column number 2 and row this is column number 2 and row number 3 so therefore it will be equal to minus 1 and then in bracket you are going to add 2 plus 3 remember that and then after that you are going to find the determinant of that so the numbers you are having is 5 7 and 2 and 3 that's what you're having so which is equal to minus 1 to the power of 5 and then what you have remember you are multiplying this direction which is 5 times 3 is 15 and you are subtracting this direction when you multiply again which is 7 times 2 is 14 so minus 1 to the power 5 is minus 1 15 minus 14 is 1 and the answer is negative 1 for that now it's coming from this rule to say when you're given that it's minus 1 i plus j and then you have got uh, the in this case the minor of i and j so it's coming from that part then the next question here what they want is that is how you get the two marks now they want uh, to write down and determine the minor of five so we are here for the minor of five and to find the minor of five which is equal to i mean is m of five which is one one remember five is in column one or one is equal to so what how do we find the minor of five we have that and we have that so it is equal to we have two three minus one and one so which is equal to remember you multiply this direction which is one times two minus you also multiply that direction which is bracket minus one times three so which is equal to one times two is two minus one times three is negative three so 2 minus minus 3 which is 2 plus 3 which is 5 so the minor of 5 which is 1 1 is equal to a 5 so that is how you do uh, these questions and in a way that's what i wanted just to cover before the end of the lesson now we have come to the end of our lesson where we were working on this matrix and we saw how we can use the Kramer's rule to solve this matrix in two different methods. Now join me again for the other two lessons that I'll do whereby I will be showing you this. Now you need to subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified every time there are new videos like this. We have come to the end of our lesson. Thank you.